Hi, my name is Katherine Kampovsky and I'm going to be teaching you how to pick out the right brush for the different types of strokes that you're going to be needing to make for an oil painting. And this lesson is brought to you thanks to Purple. I'm sitting here on the ultimate seat cushion. I love this because it helps me stay relaxed and keep my posture right when I'm doing a long painting. So these are some of the brushes that I'm going to be going over today. As you can see, there's a wide variety in shape, size, color, and texture of these brushes. Um, you can buy brushes made out of several different things. I typically buy synthetic hair brushes. I have a few real hair brushes passed down to me from my grandma, but they do make brushes with real hair. Um, and sort of, the reason I like synthetic is it's, it's a bit thinner and more dense, which leaves um, a cleaner line. But here we've got a filbert, a flat, a detail brush, and a blending brush. So these are just some of the thousands of brush options that exist. But these are kind of the main categories that all of the brushes you see at the art store are gonna be um, divided into. Real hair brushes, I, I wouldn't even necessarily say that it's a benefit. Um, they're more expensive and they sort of leave the hair lines, which some people want. Like you can sort of see um, the texture of the brush more. Um, and it looks more like it's been painted. Whereas a synthetic brush um, is a little bit more opaque and makes like a cleaner, darker stroke. The hair, especially if you're using thick oil paint or anything, any thick medium, um, the hair, the hair brushes will leave those like texture dents from the brush into the stroke, which is a style preference. But for the most part, um, anything that you can do with a hairbrush, you can do with a synthetic brush, and anything you can do with a synthetic brush, you can do with a hairbrush. It's just a matter of preference. They just create different. Um, different looks to the painting overall and different shapes. So for example, I do these paintings with uh, flat brushes only. If I didn't do that, then they would have a different feel at the end. The technique would be virtually identical. But if I was using a brush like this, the shape of the strokes would be different and they would make the whole painting look different. So that's something that you just figure out over time what you like and what you think looks cool. Um, but they all, they all create sort of slightly varied versions of the same thing. So I'm gonna start with my favorite style of brush and this um, is called a, a flat. And basically what it is, is um, it's in a square shape and it's got a thin side. This is the type of brush that I exclusively use on my paintings because I like to have squared off strokes, which is best achieved with something like this. So to show you an example. If I was um, creating a stroke on this painting, I'm just gonna use bright random colors. It's, it's not necessarily gonna be the skin tones, but with a brush like this, um, your strokes come off rather squared. And for me, the way that I like to paint is uh, with very square strokes. So I use a lot of flats. And I use the broad side for this because um, the thin side is useful for several other, several other different things, but um, this is my favorite type of brush. You can get this in any size and it can be blended out um, after you lay the stroke down, but I personally like to use these to lay down all my strokes because it gives me that cool squared effect. Um, but you can use the thin side for things like eyebrow hairs or um, some thinner detailed lines. So for example, for the eyelid, you could use the thin side of this to create that line. Which is much easier to do in my opinion than using a really, really small brush because you still get the, the wideness of the flat. So next one I have is this brush, which it's called a filbert, I think, but I don't particularly like this kind of brush because it's not conducive with my style, but this brush will lay down more of a rounded stroke. So, for example. And people who end up blending out their paintings often use this because it's useful for getting into rounded spaces of the face, but as you can see, and this one's made of real hair, 
or I believe some sort of non-synthetic hair. And that makes it a little bit um, rougher around the edges, but you can see it makes sort of a round stroke at the end, which is useful for when you're um, getting into the rounded areas of the face, like right here. Um, so let me like, go ahead and lay down a stroke there. Again, this is not the skin tone um, of the painting, but just for demonstration's sake. It can be used to make more rounded organic lines, which some people prefer. And this too comes in many different shapes and sizes, or many different sizes, I should say. So that's a filbert. And then another one that I wanted to demonstrate was sort of one of my secrets, which is, this is actually um, an eyeshadow blending brush from Elf Cosmetics. And I use this, not as much anymore, but when I used to do really, really realistic portraits, um, these are like $2 a piece. And using a, a fluffy brush like this, which they do create um, in art stores and you can buy from art stores, they're typically expensive. But this fluffy dome shaped brush is perfect for blending your colors together. So for example, if I was trying to do a really smoothed out, realistic looking portrait, you just take this and you sort of like lightly in circular motions go over your transition areas and it'll blend your colors together seamlessly. Which again, this is sort of a stylistic choice and I don't find myself using this at all anymore because I like my paintings to be a little more geometric. But um, when I used to do realistic portraits, I would do the entire painting and then I would go in at the end and go over every single little area with this brush. You can also use like a foundation brush, which is bigger. And the last brush that I want to mention is this sort of thin synthetic hair brush and I use this for if I'm incorporating writing or words or any fine details onto my paintings. Um, I will use one of these because it allows you to create a finer point. Um, and I typically only have small brushes in this shape but you can get them in, in larger shapes. Also if you were to paint some sort of landscape, um, you could do, you could use a brush like this. Um, you could also use a brush like this for feathering it of the eyebrows or the eyelashes. I prefer the squared off one still because it matches my style better, but if you were doing a portrait and you wanted to go in with a brush like this, you could add hair like strokes that way. It sort of does the same thing, but a little bit different. And yeah, I usually use these for, for lettering because lettering is sort of a whole other art form in itself. But these thick, like dense synthetic brushes hold a lot of pigment, which is helpful for doing letters. So, just a little example. And um, what I'm doing over here is I'm dipping into mineral spirits, which basically just thins the pigment a little bit so that it further saturates the brush but it helps you get a little bit cleaner lines. Making sure to keep the brush saturated with mineral spirits. And um, a brush like this is good for people who do cartoons or more um, animated paintings, things like that, for doing outlines and filling in spaces with solid colors. It's not particularly good for anything that's gonna be blended because it's usually used for details. What I have here is just a little tiny jar of mineral spirits, which is essentially just a paint thinner. And what I do with that is, while I'm painting, if my brush gets to where it's not like depositing the color onto the canvas how I want it to, um, you just lightly dip your brush into that mineral spirits and then you can sort of mix that into the colors that you're mixing. It just makes it um, a little bit thinner, a little bit more moist, and a little bit um, more dense on the canvas. You can even use it for certain effects, like 
if you wanted to do drips in your painting. If you use really heavy mineral spirits, then you can sort of oversaturate it like that and have it drip down, which is a style choice as well. But personally, I try to be light on the mineral spirits because mineral spirits will thin out your oil paint, which will make it um, a little more transparent on the canvas, which is not necessarily something I'm going for, but you can experiment with that yourself. One thing that I used to do when I started painting was I would leave my brushes sitting in mineral spirits overnight um, so that the paint didn't harden on the brushes and I didn't have to clean them. But I have found that by doing that, you can damage your brushes um, because the paint thinner will eat away at the synthetic hairs or the real hairs and it'll make the um, strands of hair fall out. When it comes to caring for your brushes, it doesn't really matter what shape or size of brush you have. They all require cleaning. Um, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is if you've got a dirty brush, wipe it off on paper towel, wipe the wet paint off, and then use, you can either use mineral spirits or um, a brush cleaner, which is made specifically for this. Um, and you just sort of massage the brush into the brush cleaner. Wipe it off, rinse it off, and let it sit. The main, the main tip for keeping brushes clean is to remove the paint while it's wet. Because once the paint is dried onto your brush, you pretty much have to put the brush away. Um, but mineral spirits are not designed to clean brushes, but they, it can be used for that. When you're blending paint that's already been laid down, you're gonna use a technique that you don't necessarily use when you're laying down paint. And one of the reasons that I like to use these eyeshadow brushes or a foundation brush is because it is a technique that um, women do every day when they're doing their makeup. And it's sort of a buffing motion. You wanna really, really lightly go over those colors in a circular motion, like you're brushing your teeth, basically, because that makes it um, smooth and consistent throughout the blending because basically I'm dragging the red color into the blue and then the blue back into the red so that it leaves a smooth finish. And then to clean a brush like this, the best way to do it is take a paper towel or a blank canvas or whatever and get the paint out like that because you don't want to drag those colors around too much. So this painting is a good example because it has several of these brush strokes that I'm referring to in it. You can see, um, especially here around the neck, you can see where I've laid my paint in in sort of rectangular or square shapes, which is a style that I personally like. That is not consistent with all portrait painters, of course, um, but that's something that I would use a flat brush for. You can also see up here on the hairline and a little bit on the eyebrows, you can see some feathering, which these on the eyebrows, since they're more straight, I probably did with a flat brush. And then these were probably done with um, a brush like this, which I also used a smaller version of this to do these letters on the face. Um, and as you can see on the painting in the background, I used a really big brush similar to this for those letters, because it, these, these sort of long skinny ones are good for, for lettering and fine lines. So the main difference, I think, um, in my paintings now versus my, my paintings a year ago or so is at that time my goal was to make it as realistic looking as possible, which would mean basically that I would do something similar to this, but I would blend every single thing out with a brush like this or some sort of um, fluffy brush, which sort of takes away some of the... Um, the form of the painting because it smooths everything out, which is just a different style of portrait. Um, as I've gotten more advanced with my painting, I'm sort of trying to deconstruct realism in a way that requires less effort, one, and also makes the painting look more like a painting and less like a photo because I think that's more expressive. But um, when I was doing more realistic portraits, it wasn't necessarily as important to me what type of brush shape I was using or what size. For example, in this painting, I try to use the largest possible brush for each area of color, which is something I'm still working on that's kind of hard to get, get the hang of. Um, but when I was doing really realistic portraits, it didn't really matter as long as I got the color in, it was all gonna get blended out anyway, so I wasn't super concerned with the shape and size of my brush. But um, I 
have found that advanced painters put a lot of emphasis on each individual stroke being as like intentional and meaningful as possible. So that's something that I'm working on now, but it just depends on your personal style and your level of experience in painting. So one little hack that I wanted to share is this um, paint organization board that I built. Um, it's basically just a piece of wood with a bunch of nails sticking out. And then I, I have found that this collection of oil paints is so difficult to keep organized without this um, because these paints, you can pile them in a box and then they explode and then they get all over each other and then you waste money. So I built this. Basically all it is is my brushes or my um, paint tubes have binder clips on the ends so that I can hang them up here. And when I'm really feeling organized, I'll color coordinate them. But this keeps all my paint in one place and gives me a visual of what colors I have a lot of or don't have a lot of so that I can stay stocked on the colors that I need. Um, and this is a really easy hack. I, I think I saw this idea on Pinterest and it cost me like 20 bucks to do the whole thing. Hopefully you guys had a good time following along with me while we started this portrait and now I hope you're relaxed and ready to take on a night of sleep and an important project tomorrow.